Kirsch, so, and nobody came here to hear 25, 30 minutes of political speeches, so I'm going to uh, keep it short. But first, I want to apologize. I want to make a couple uh, 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 notice of a couple people that are here that uh, we omitted when I put the uh, list together. And uh, we have a candidate for state representative, Susanna Whips Lee, is here. Stand up, please, Susanna. And we also have Republican State Committee woman, Kim Palmer. Woo! Kim, stand up, please. Susanna, how many miles was it for you to get down here? Uh, just a wee stretch of the legs, no. Just a wee stretch of the legs, yeah. Yeah, just a wee stretch. Athol? She came all the way down here from Athol to join us, everybody. If that's not a woman that deserves support, deserves to be elected, I don't know who else is. Uh, coming from a career in law enforcement, and uh, one of the first things I have to get used to in public life as a politician is the idea of uh, public speaking. For 26 years, my version of public speaking usually began with me putting my left hand on the Bible, raising my right hand to God, and swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth while testifying in a court of law. This is a completely different arena. But I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> Which is slowly lacking in Beacon Hill these days. People ask me why I'm running, and I could go in and I could talk in, I could talk in platitudes. I could talk uh, in generalities. I like to break it down. Every time I speak, I use different examples, but I like to break it down into real-world things that we understand, things that I've experienced in my life. One of the things that drove me to run for office, to leave my career from the state police and run for office, is the EBT fraud that we see that's running rampant throughout this state. The arrogance of the current administration, where they refer to cases of EBT fraud that are well reported in the media, they refer to it as anecdotes. Mr. Patrick, Governor Patrick, I worked at the state police barracks in Yarmouth and I booked prisoners coming in with four or five EBT cards. They are not anecdotes, people. They are reality. And it reached a point with my troopers that are working out there hard every day. We have a lot of police officers and a lot of troopers in this room right now. If you work in law enforcement, stand up for a moment, please, and just be recognized. All my friends, I'm getting that look like I don't even want it. Stand up and be recognized because of the great work you do. If you work in fire service, Stand up and be recognized because you deserve your cause and your benefit. The police officers and troopers that I know, that I work with every day, they're starting to give up. They're starting to not care anymore. They lock up four, five, six people a month. They have three or four EBT cards on them. We see the abuse. We reach out to the Department of Transitional Assistance, and they don't care. You know what happens? My troopers that I was supervising in my barracks up here, they started to give up. I don't want my troopers to give up anymore. That's why I ran for office. I want to get into office and I want to do whatever I can with that office to change things. So these brave women and men don't give up. I have a daughter that goes to school at the University of Southern Maine. She couldn't be here with us today. My oldest daughter, Maggie, she's 21 years old. And like my youngest daughter, Caitlin, the absolute light of my life. Maggie is a United States citizen. She goes to school in Maine. She paid, we pay non-resident tuition for my daughter, Maggie, to go to school in Maine, which is $32,000 a year. However, and it, let me remind you, she is a resident and a citizen of the United States, a legal resident and citizen of the United States. If she was not a legal resident, not a U.S. citizen, if she was here illegally, she can go to school at $14,000 a year at UMass Dartmouth. And that's wrong. That's wrong. And how was that done? That was done by executive order by the governor. Folks, things need to change. And that's the reason why I decided that it was time for me to leave my career from the state police and run for office. One last thing. Thank you. One last little bit, enough about the politics, let's talk about Patty's Day. 
Again, we're not that great about talking about the politics, the Irish, so I'm not even going to go near religion. <laughs> Paddy's Day has very special meaning to me, because many of you folks don't know, but my birthday is the day after Paddy's Day, March 18th. <laughs> what that means to me is we all remember when we were children. Every, every one of us in this room remembers having happy birthdays. It's some of the greatest days of our childhood were our birthdays. The friends would come over, we'd have a big party in the basement, play pin the tail on the donkey, have some cake. My birthday always involved green hats, leprechauns, <laughs> Irish music, and the lucky the leprechaun cakes from Carvel ice cream. <laughs> so Patty's Day has very, very special meaning to me. And uh, to see so many friends come out here to celebrate St. Patty's Day, with my family and I, and to give us our support, my beautiful wife, Lisa. <laughs> Obviously, I couldn't do any of this without her full support. I can't do anything without her full support. <laughs> yes. My lovely 19-year-old daughter, Caitlin. Caitlin, stand up, please. I know it's embarrassing, but stand up, please, and wave to everybody. My brother Dave, who came all the way down from Auburn, and his wife Jen, stand up. And my two lovely aunts who came down from Halifax and Worcester, my Aunt Nancy and my Aunt Mary Lou. One thing we all have in common, I know, we're tall. I get it, yes, I get it. But the fact that all of you came out to celebrate St. Patrick's Day with me, it, I, and I know I use the word so much, I use the word humbling an awful lot. It's very humbling to know that I have so many friends, so many supporters, and so many people that are behind us in this race to try and restore some balance and some sanity to Beacon Hill. And I want to thank you all very, very much for coming out. Please enjoy the rest of the day. The beer is going to keep flowing. I hope you enjoyed your meal. Have a great Sunday and have a great St. Patty's Day. Thank you.